Good morning, beloved, and welcome to this time of worship on this, the first Sunday of May, on this Communion Sunday. So if you haven't already, I hope that you will go and get something to eat and drink so in a little bit we can share a holy meal together. I know a few weeks ago when we were all worshiping together in church, we never thought that it would take us this long before we would gather back together. But remember, whether we are in the same space or worshiping in separate rooms, we are always connected by our love. We are connected by the love that God has given us. And we are always, always following the beloved voice of Christ, our Good Shepherd. So remember, as always, this is the day that God has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And please join me in our call to worship. Christ has called us to this time of worship we open our lives to Christ's grace. Bring to Christ your hurts and hopes. And let us pray these familiar words, recognizing in the risen Christ, our good shepherd. Jesus, you are our shepherd. We shall never want. You make us lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside the still waters. You restore our souls. You guide us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for you, Christ, comfort us. Jesus has prepared a table for us in the presence of our foes. Jesus has anointed us with the oil of salvation. Our cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of our Holy Savior forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. O shepherding God, in this time of pandemic, we join together and pray. When we are not sure, O God, help us to find calm. When information comes to us from all directions, help us to discern what is correct and what is not. When fear makes it hard for us to breathe, when anxiety strangles our hearts, Slow us down, O God, fill us with your spirit and help us to reach out with our hearts when we cannot touch one another with our hands. Help us to be socially connected in these times when we are forced to be socially distant. Help us to love as you have loved us, reminding us that perfect love casts out all fear. On this day, we lift up our prayers for those who are helping for the doctors and the nurses, for the technicians and the janitors, the aides and the caregivers, and for all those who are behind the scenes, the researches, researchers and the epidemiologists, the investigators, And we pray for those who continue to go out each day 
to make sure that we can meet our own basic needs, working in grocery stores, in veterinary hospitals, farms, and in local governments. We pray for those who are sick and those who are grieving. And we hold in our heart all who are affected all around this world because we know that this pandemic is truly a global crisis affecting all of your beloved creation. We pray for safety, for health, for wholeness. May we be the ones who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked and house those who are without homes. May we be the ones who walk with those who feel alone May we be the ones who do all that we can to heal the sick in spite of this epidemic, in spite of our fears. Help us, O oh God, so that we might help one another in the love of the Creator, in the name of the healer and in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all we pray, may it be so as we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And a reading now from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, where Jesus tells us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of Christ. And let us pray. O oh, Holy God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and good to you, who are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. How often have you heard those words, turn to them for comfort, especially in difficult times? I think that these verses may be some of the most beloved and familiar verses in the Bible. They're the ones we turn to when we need a little extra support. And I imagine as you heard them earlier, many of you joined in and said them right along with Rich as he read them. And I imagine many of you have turned to this psalm over the last several weeks, trying to find some grounding in these uncertain times. Looking towards our Holy Shepherd, looking for comfort in the darkest valleys, looking for guidance towards those green pastures, looking for our Shepherd, the one who will provide what we need so we shall not want. It sounds so nice, so simple. It's such a familiar and 
easy psalm for us to turn to. And it's one we hear so many times. It's also one that we hear so often at funerals. And I've been thinking a lot about that as I've been preparing my thoughts for today. Because this week, we passed the 60,000 mark of deaths from this pandemic right here in America. In just three months, over 60,000 people have died from the coronavirus just in our country and over a million people worldwide. And on top of that, there's all the deaths of people who are not connected to the virus. Deaths of beloved wives and mothers, fathers and sons, husbands and daughters, including people right here in our congregation. So many funerals in the past several weeks where this psalm was quietly read behind a mask while a handful of mourners stood at an approved distance, unable to touch one another, many unable to even be there. The Lord is my shepherd. We say the words, but how many of us want more right now? Over the last several weeks, we've been reading stories of those who also have wanted more right now. In the aftermath of crucifixion, as Jesus' followers watched him from a distance, suffer an excruciating death alone. Their hearts were broken and they felt so alone and they felt so guilty. I wonder how many of them turned back to those ancient scriptural promises found in our psalm, those promises of comfort and hope promises of a shepherding God who will come to them and guide them through dark times and lead them to better days. But even as the words, the Lord is my shepherd, left their mouths, I imagine their eyes were full of tears. Until. Until that moment when the risen Christ was known through the wounds, through the breaking of the bread, through the promises fulfilled, through the stories that each of them remembered. And all of these things then passed down generation to generation, passed down through times of persecution through times of war, through times of plague, through times just like now. And we hold on to those stories and those promises, just like those ancient followers did. And it all begins with the good shepherd's voice as he whispers in our ear, follow me. Follow me. And even in these crazy, uncertain times, we hear that voice and we know it and we know that we can trust it. And when we follow him, we know that we are promised abundant life. That is what we must keep our focus on today. Not what we want right now, but the eternal confidence that Jesus will meet us on the journey when we need him most. And even if we never leave our room, Jesus will find us. 
Today, we still have all of those promises and all of those stories. We still remember and we still share them with one another through the sharing of a meal and through the sharing of our love. We may not be together, at least not in a physical sense, but we're still a community of faith. We are still connected by our love and nothing, not even a pandemic can change that. As the Apostle Paul once wrote, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Nothing. Jesus tells us today that he is the good shepherd and like God, he leads us to what we need. Food and water and air, faith, deep rest, and real love. Trusting him frees us to enjoy all of these good gifts as fully as God gives them. We may not experience them in the ways that we were, are used to. We're in a new reality. But these good gifts are still available to us. And the richness of God's blessings are far beyond anything that I can describe. And when we follow our shepherd, we experience abundant and blessed life and no one can take that away from us. Christ is the gate, and when we follow through, we have the freedom to love whomever we find ourselves with in the flock that we know, and we know that everyone in that flock is as loved by Jesus as we are. And that that flock grows bigger and bigger until it surrounds this entire globe. If this pandemic has shown us nothing more, it's that we're all in this together. Jesus is our Lord and our shepherd. And so we need fear no evil. Surely as we follow the sound of his voice, Goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, even in these crazy and uncertain times. Amen. Last week, we heard that wonderful gospel story of those two men walking down the road to Emmaus and how they journeyed with a stranger. And as they told their story to the stranger, the story of Jesus, the stranger became more and more involved in their story and started to preach to them. And they wanted to hear more. And so they sat down and they shared a meal. And in the sharing of that meal, the stranger took a piece of bread. And when he broke it, their eyes were opened and they recognized that stranger as the risen Christ. And there, at that moment, they remembered. I always wonder at what point 
the different apostles remembered. Remembered that last supper and finally understood what it was that Jesus was trying to tell them. Because on that night, as he gathered them together, he knew he had so little time with them. And yet he knew that there was still so much work to be done. When we look at our lives, we see instances and moments. But for God, he can see the entire span. And Jesus knew that it would take so much more than what the disciples had. And so he gave them the gift of this table. It was something that people could see. It was some, a story that people could hear. And it was a meal that people could taste. And then they could take that gift and pass it on, sharing it everywhere they went. And this meal, this gift given to us, has been passed down generation to generation. It is a gift that has helped people in troubled times, sustaining them and giving them strength and it has reminded people of God's love during times of peace and prosperity. It is a gift that we share every time we gather together and remember. And so today, we remember how Jesus took that bread at the end of the meal, how he lifted it above his head how he blessed it and broke it and said, this is like my body broken for you. And this is the bread of life that will sustain you. And whenever you eat from this loaf, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup of blessing and as he poured it, he said, this is God's new covenant given to you, a covenant given in my blood. This is the covenant of eternal life. Whenever you drink from this cup, remember me. And so today we will eat from the bread, we will drink from the cup, but the most important friends, beloved, the most important thing is that we will remember. We will remember all that Jesus has done for us, we will remember the stories that sustain us and we will remember that the day will come when we will be together again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for this table has been prepared for you. And I invite you to take your bread or whatever it is that you have chosen to eat, to break it, and to share it now. This is the bread of life. And I invite you now to take whatever drink you have chosen to take and to share it now knowing that this is the cup of blessing. And let us pray. Oh, holy God, bless this meal and bless all those who have shared in it. And bless, oh God, your entire body of Christ. Amen. Our time of worship is over. It has been wonderful to spend this Sunday morning with you. 
And so as we prepare to leave, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and bring you peace. Go in peace, beloved. Amen.